Hi, this is Derek Commodore with Pivotal Software. This presentation is part of the Green Plum Summit 2019 conference, also part of the larger Postgres 2019 conference. In New York, April, hashtag scale matters. Today's session, I'm gonna be walking you through Green Plum Building Blocks, or GBB for short. GBB is our Superior price performance and extreme simplicity appliance light offering for Green Plum customers. It is our opinionated on premise platform for massively parallel Postgres. It is all about the blocks. So, Pivotal's opinionated Green Plum optimized engineered system. We start and end with the blocks. It provides you unrivaled price performance for next generation analytics and AI. Greenplum Building Blocks leverages state-of-the-art Dell servers, storage, and networking. It is simple and flexible sizing, scalable from the smallest workloads, i.e. a couple terabytes to the largest, multi-petabytes. It is cloud-inspired and on-premise experience. Brought to you jointly, by the way, between Pivotal Greenplum and Dell MC. The feature set of Green Plum Building Blocks can be categorized by two different classifications. Uh, the engineered system aspects on the left and the optimized scalable deployments on the right. Uh, all design decisions in Green Plum Building Blocks are based on price performance or bang for the buck. You will see this demonstrated throughout the rest of this presentation. It leverages advanced Dell commodity hardware. All engineered components have been tested and selected for their green plum affinity. Provide simple and easy cluster sizing. We provide multi-generational hardware compatibility. And specifically what I mean by that is one plus version of GBB. We will ensure wireline NIC switch compatibility. <coughs> Facilitates next generation replacement for your appliance. And by appliance, not only am I referring to the Dell EMC DCA, but also, and just as importantly, Oracle Exit Data and IBM's Matiza. On the right, we have optimized and scalable deployments. This aspect of our feature sets include high performance multi channel IO. If you leverage the optional storage blocks, you get a multi channel environment for Greenplum. We provide you independent and parallel scale out across compute and storage. Again, with uh, an optional storage add on that I'll go into a little bit more in a moment, you can scale your storage separately from compute, which is basically required at this point in our markets. And last but not least, you can scale cost effectively and efficiently. There are two types of green plum blocks <clears throat> and green plum building blocks offering. The left are what you can think of as the compute blocks or just what you refer to as green plum blocks. The right are the storage blocks. The left is required, the right is optional. On the left hand side, these are engineered compute and storage, all of which are highly available out of the box. You cannot order a green plum block that's not highly available. There are three types of blocks. They are balanced, dense, and fast. You select the compute block type you're most interested in, and that's best meets your workloads unique characteristics, I should add. And you scale it appropriately. Whether you need one, say balanced, or you need 10 balanced. We abstract all of the underlying hardware for you. That is absolutely part of the value proposition of Green Plum Building Blocks for you as one of our value customers. Just like you go up to Amazon or Google and you instantiate an instance of compute, you really generally and usually anyway don't know what the actual underlying hardware is powering it, nor do you have to care. We are providing that same experience to you on premise for a best of breed open source MPP, also known as Green Plum Database. On the right hand side, these are our storage blocks. They are optional, first and foremost. They can be leveraged to extend Greenplum's native storage through file and table spaces. You can also treat these for 
additional use cases and leverage them. So for example, data lakes ingest landing zones. It's raw storage it comes to you in 144 terabyte capacities. You can order one, two or four of them per compute block on the left. It's optional and it's cheap and deep. It is, by the way, if you're curious, HDD spinning disk, that's why it's cheap and deep for you. To dive a little further into the compute blocks. There are three type, types of compute blocks. There's the balance, the fast, and the dense. The balance is as you would expect. These components are equally balanced throughout for pivotal green plum usage. We have tested these components. We have gauged the performance of them, the throughput, the trade-offs, the cost. This is a nice balanced package. <clears throat> the fast block, as you would expect, is twice the RAM and CPU. So for those customers out there, if you have high concurrency, EDW, BI workloads, if you have heavy data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, these workloads fall best and fit the fast block. Equally important if you are flipped and you don't have that much compute memory needs, challenges and needs, but you rather you have storage needs and challenges. Perhaps you're pruning your tables on a weekly or even a daily basis because you're watching your storage that closely. I have customers that fit that criteria. The dense block is for you. It doubles the in-chassis storage. It's gonna give you a high amount of storage to compute ratio. And it's, it's a good fit for anytime you, you have less CPU utilization and the storage just continues to be a struggle. Uh, and all transparency, there's many customers out there that fit this criteria. So it's a great offering for those needs. The Green Plum storage blocks, these are optional. Uh, again, I already mentioned they come in 144 terabyte. You, this does enable you to scale the storage separately from compute, probably the biggest value proposition part of the storage block. Many customers to met today just demand this capability. They cannot scale storage through compute. They must have another way to do this. And again, it provides you green plum native or managed storage as well as just raw storage for ingest landing zone and data lake use cases. So in summary, here are the four block types. The compute blocks are on the left, the storage block is on the right. I won't read all these details out, but I think most of this should make pretty good sense to you watching the presentation. Uh, the one call out on this slide, however, is the notion of temp and spill. So unlike a DCA and other appliance and appliance like offerings for Pivotal Green Plum in the past, we do not leverage the same disk pool and ray groups as the primary segments for a temp and spill. We have a separate volume and in this case, actual storage disk for temp and spill and green plum building blocks. These are the non volatile memory express half pipe, half length, also known as HHHL cards. These are wicked fast uh, IO storage and that is expressly used for our temp and spill space. I'll get a little, I'll get into that a little bit more in just a second actually with the next slide about what hardware powers which of these components. So in a balanced block, what you're actually going to receive, again, without going any further into the hardware details than what you see on this slide, you will be receiving 1.5 terabyte of total RAM, 96 cores, across the one block. You will have 38.4 usable. This is database usable, not raw, not any other type of storage metric, but grain plum usable 38.4 from the primary. You will have an equal 38.4 for mirror. And last but certainly not least, you'll have 12.8 for spill and temp. You'll also notice we provide the storage technologies leverage for each of these. So going from top to bottom, we are leveraging the NVMe non volatile memory SSD for package drives for primary. We are leveraging the SAT SSDs uh, for the mirrors. And I'll get into that a little bit more in just a second. 
And again, we leverage the HHHL cards for Temp and Spill because they're the fastest and most expensive component. <clears throat> the SAS SSDs are rated. We are going, we have, and we will continue to choose reliability over any other you know, dimension when it comes to securing the mirror segments. So ensuring that those those discs, excuse me, are are rock solid and rated, highly available to keep your mirrors running in the event you have a primary failure and outage is of the most importance to us. In summary, resiliency is key for our mirrors. Actually, resiliency is key for all of them, but especially for the mirror. On that note, <clears throat> there are no moving parts in the chassis in chassis for grim foam building blocks. This is all SSD technology. The only technically speaking moving part are the fans. So otherwise there are no moving parts. These systems do not fail like you're probably used to in the spinning HDD scenario like we've all grown up in. The drives generally speaking don't fail. They run out of life slowly and over a very, very long period of many, many years. Do the solid state still out? You are given warnings. It is a much more solid, much more reliable overall system for an MPP mission critical database than what we've had in the past. Moving on. The framework. So this is where many customers want to ask questions and get confused, and it's understandable. Uh, but the good news is, part of, again, part of our value proposition is that we abstract all of this for you. So. Yes, we absolutely, of course, are going to need racks. We're going to need uh, PDUs, and we're going to need switches and cables. All of this wraparound infrastructure is abstracted for you, just like when you go to Amazon or Google and you provision uh, some compute. You really don't know, generally speaking, anyway, you don't know what the underlying hardware actually is, and you can apply the same paradigm again to, to Green Plum Building. So, yes. You will see in our bill of materials and the Dell quotes, which is who you transact for the hardware with, you will see all these components in there. Uh, but we are only going to leverage the hardware when it's necessity because it's not just about being fast for Green Plum. It's about being fast and yet cost effective. So, <clears throat> for example, in a one block configuration of payload, you will not see separate master servers. You will also not see separate interconnect switches. What you will get is you'll have one rack with two PDUs with the top of rack switch and two nodes cross-connected. That is it. No more, no less is required or needed. As you scale out, we will re-leverage 100% of that hardware investment coupled with, at some point, depending on how much you're scaling it out, additional interconnect switches will break out the master standby, and it will expand accordingly at the time that you need that additional hardware investment for your workload. So we are not going to waste any amount of your money on hardware that's not absolutely required to get you the best experience and the most reliable experience for Pivotal Grand Plum. On GBB sizing, GBB sizing, <clears throat> we have two easy ways to go about this. The manual approach is more at the top part of this slide, or the bottom is the secondary approach, which is just pick a, a template. The manual one is extremely easy, so I'm going to start there. The pre-configured templates are even easier, actually. The manual approach is you pick a block type that's right for your workload, i.e. do you have a balanced environment, do you have a high compute, or do you have a high storage? So you pick the appropriate block type. Do you want to optionally augment that block type with uh, storage blocks? Again, it's optional. And once you have that total spec, how many of those do you need? Again, this is a big part of our value to you as a valued customer of Pivotal Green Farm is we abstract so much of the detail to make it easy to consume and expand as your needs evolve. Last but not least, you can select a pre-configured offering or a template. I'm gonna go into those a little bit more in just a moment, actually. So first and foremost is the DCA replace. Some of you may be familiar with what the, the EMC DCA is. Some of you may not be, but in any event, it was the predecessor to Green Plum Building Blocks and that it was a pure appliance offering for Green Plum and Temple Green Plum. 
uh, the, uh, the Grant Plum Building Blocks, excuse me, is an appliance-like offering that is the successor to the MCDCA. So one was an appliance, one is appliance-like, a little bit of difference, certainly, in those two statements. But this was the predecessor uh, of Grim Plum Building Blocks. Many customers run it. It is uh, a very simplistic appliance. It's based on spinning disk. Uh, you can put four what they term modules, which was uh, synonymous with a quarter rack into a DCA rack. So converting that over to a GBB spec and offering for every quarter rack or module of DCA, and this includes DCA V1, V2, V3. The appropriate equivalent in a Grim Plum Building Blocks offering is one balance block. So for example, if you have one full rack of DCA gear and you come to us and you'd like a replacement for that rack, that's going to be four Grim Plum Building Block balance blocks. And that is to replace. So perhaps you want to have more compute power when you migrate over to GBB. In that case, we would probably flip these to fast blocks. <clears throat> but just to simply do the job and replace, and by the way, when I say replace, you're going to get definitely a bump on speed and performance when you replace it. But to ensure you have you know, adequate capacity, adequate compute, this is the right template and easy play sizing-wise for that. If you have a data lake, and you'd like to replace it, you'd like to modernize it. Nothing against Hortonworks, uh, which is now part of Cloudera. They've done a great business, but I think many customers are finding slowly and yet very uh, strongly that the trend is continuing where folks want a data lake like experience, but they want it through a fully end to end relational scale out database. Uh, I have a customer out of Michigan, Detroit, that called us uh, recently and said this exact thing to us. Hadoop, while it was great, and it was certainly great for a period of time, at the end of the day, it's just not fast enough. And even more importantly, it's not a full-blown, it's not an end-to-end -end true relational database. And so there are challenges in managing and administering Hadoop. Those challenges are lessened when it's a fully relational system. So with that context, this is the Green Plum Building Blocks replace if you would like to replace a data lake with GBB. Uh, so this is going to be um, one GBB dense plus two storage blocks for every 250 terabyte of data lake. So this, what this will look like, if you're curious, is in Hadoop where you had HDFS and you had many processing frameworks running on top of that, you know, fault tolerant distributed file system. You're now going to be having, you will have a similar offering through a fully relational Postgres, massively parallel Postgres system, i.e. Greenplum, that can leverage through file spaces, table spaces, and even PXF, um, that additional capacity. So that is the difference. So it is a change in software to do this, but it is a good change in software if you're looking for fully relational systems and getting out of the Hadoop administrative business. Last but not least is our IBM Natiza Replace. Uh, Natiza is a, um, it is a faster appliance as far as the general market goes. It does fairly well on speeds and feeds and high performing queries. We're well aware of that. Uh, we, we give Natiza respect where it's due and because of that respect to replace Natiza we ask for four GBB fast blocks for every Natiza full rack. This is the equivalent. The beauty of GBB is when you have these higher performance needs, we have an offering for that. And when you don't, we also have an offering for that. Again, everything in building blocks is about price and performance, not just performance. So with an Natiza replace for every rack, it's going to be four GBB fast blocks. So in this example, if you had two full racks in Natiza, that's going to equal eight GBB fast blocks. To wrap us up, Green Plum Building Blocks provides a rich price performance driven Pivotal Green Plum ecosystem. We use the word ecosystem for a reason here. It is not just Green Plum. There are customers looking to leverage things like Kafka, uh, Hadoop, third party ETL, BI, 
It is an ecosystem. Uh, certainly Green Plum is a first class citizen and our prominent citizen in this offering, but there are complementary products and offerings that can also be ran on Green Plum building blocks. It leverages Dell advanced commodity hardware. It is commodity, nothing is proprietary but certainly it is advanced. We are talking about dual and sometimes quad socket chassis, depending on what, your, what block, top your, block type you're selecting. We're also talking about a massive amount of memory, 1.5 terabyte in some cases per physical node underneath. And we're talking about leveraging next generation storage technologies like Rambaton Memory Express and VME. Uh, so it is commodity, nothing's proprietary in the stack, but it is advanced. It is simple and flexible to size the, the building block clusters. I walked you through a little bit of that just now, and there's not much more to it than actually what I just walked you through. So that is certainly a big part of the value is simplicity in the sizing domain. Building blocks provides a key capability here, which is the independent and parallel scale out across compute and storage. This again is uh, almost being mandated by our customers today. And historically speaking, it was a choice depending on vendor that they could offer this to you. Today, the customer just has to have it. You have to sell the storage, storage excuse me, separately from compute. The multi-generational hardware compatibility is likewise very important. We will provide uh, networking and wireline compatibility for one plus release of building blocks. So today, if you're curious, we are on what's internally known as Green Plum Building Blocks Generation 4. When we come to market with Generation 5, if you want to expand your GDB4 clusters leveraging Gen 5 gear, and there's many reasons why you may want to do that. The point and the most important point of that, this, excuse me, is that we will ensure compat. So you can continue to expand those clusters or you can stand up a net new cluster with Gen 5. Last but not least, Building Blocks provides a next generation replacement for legacy appliances. The EMC, DCA, Exadata, Natiza, and there are others out there, but those are the three top ones we're seeing most often. All of these appliances were generally speaking engineered and built in the 2000s. They all, while they all had their uniqueness and their capabilities that stood out amongst their peers, at the end of the day, they were all engineered with the same general principles, which was simplicity over flexibility and usually performance over price, in summary. Building blocks provides performance with cost. More importantly, building blocks provides simplicity and the absolute most important thing about building blocks, building blocks excuse me, is it provides high degree of flexibility. It does all of that while offering to you, providing to you a very appliance-like fit. So we have taken the best of the old world of appliances and we've coupled it with modern day flexibility and hardware and simplicity. In summary. That concludes us on this presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have more interest in Green Plum Building Blocks, please feel free to reach out to your local Dell and Pivotal account teams. Uh, again, my name is Derek Commodore. I appreciate your time on today's session. I, have, I am a part of the uh, global Green Plum Building Blocks team. Look forward to hearing and working with you. And thank you again for your time and watching today's presentation.